Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the second one of the day for July 24th, 2020, recorded around 2.14 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, out here in the Central Pacific Hurricane Basin, real quick, we do have Major Hurricane Douglas uh, rap or now starting to undergo a rapid weakening trend. Sustained winds are near 100 and, 120 to 130 miles per hour and a pressure right about 954 millibars expected to head into Hawaii over the next several days or so. And this could cause a problem for the Hawaiian Islands as a direct threat to uh, land here uh, over the next few days or so. If we take a look here at the IR satellite presentation. A couple of things to note here in today's uh, visible or in today's IR satellite run. First and foremost, we have a fairly well developed eye still. We'll highlight that in blue. A fairly well developed eye is still kind of present there. And in the last frame, you can still really see it quite well. Deeper convection about uh, negative 65 to negative 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, cloud tops across here, rotating around obviously. But you notice how disheveled the inner core looks today and that's thanks thanks in part due to a lot of this drier air and cooler waters out in this region further towards the northwest of the system where the storm is heading this is still expected to be a hurricane on approach to the hawaiian islands all of Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands, all the Hawaiian Islands needs to start taking their preparedness plans and precautions now as this will probably be coming in within the next about 60 hours or so to the Hawaiian Islands and impacts could begin as early as the next about 48 hours or so on approach into the island chain. So for you folks uh, there, know anyone there or visiting, make sure you guys stay tuned to the official National Hurricane Center or Central, uh, Central Pacific Hurricane Center forecasts and the local weather service office there in Honolulu, Hawaii for more specific updates on uh, Hurricane Douglas. Now, back to the Atlantic Basin out here in the Gulf of Mexico. We are now watching Tropical Storm Hannah. Became a tropical storm last night. That's our eighth named storm of the season. And already off to a very hot, hot start already. But maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour now. It's strengthening 999 millibars, so sub 1,000 millibars now. And this is expected to come in here to Texas, Texas within the next about 24 to 36 hours or so. The official track forecast has us coming in towards the Rio Grande Valley and McAllen, uh, just to the north of McAllen, Texas. Um, you know, the near near Corpus Christi, north of Brownsville. So this, just to give a general idea, the tropical storm watch for the Houston area uh, for along the coastline there has been canceled. However, of course, heavy rainfall and gusty winds is still going to be a problem from time to time for the Houston area. Uh, but this is more so a southern Texas problem along the coast here. And this is strengthening quite nicely today. Today. If we take a look here at the visible satellite, a couple of things to point out here. We'll stop the frame on the very last. So a couple of interesting things here. First of all, you notice we have a lot more cumulus clouds over the uh, Texas area right now, over the continental landmass here. Indicative that we do have a rising air mass across this area that's backfeeding into tropical storm Hannah over here. So all of this uh, cumulus field over here, it's developing thunderstorms over the water. It's getting pulled in. So this is uh, inadvertently also pulling in some drier continental air from the United States. However, you notice what's happening. We have a fairly good tail of fairly deeper convection here around the center, which is presumably right around here. And we've seen hints that maybe we have some sort of mid-level to lower-level eye-like feature starting to appear out here in the visible satellite. But it's also possible that we have some dry air that's getting wrapped around. You notice that we have very little convection on the west and northwest sides of it, except for near the land masses. So we have a fairly dry west side and that's kind of one of the things that's hindering it from significantly organizing however you notice we have one little convective burst right here that just appeared on the last frame and that's going to try to rotate around so if any of these convective bursts can form right near the center that's going to be fairly healthy for the system 
Now, if we take a look here at the, the uh, radar presentation from Houston, Texas here, this is the Houston radar site, which is a good about 200 miles away from the storm. We're shooting a beam hike here of about 21,000 feet and about 146 nautical miles away from the radar site. So about 155 miles from the radar here for, and from a landmass. But you notice we have a fairly disorganized looking little band. It was fairly organized earlier, but we do have kind of the semicircle of action occurring right near the center. And this, again, is a fairly broad, loosely organized system that you can see is kind of wrapped up something in like here. So it's not really going to intensify significantly in the short term excuse me it's not going to intensify significantly in the short term with the structure at all it is going to struggle to intensify because what's happening here is you're getting a lot of that dry air that's still kind of surging in because obviously this low pressure center it what it's doing is it's counterclockwise so it's you know and just inferred that we're getting a cyclonic vorticity like that around the center that's ending up bringing in some of the uh, drier continental air from the United States over into the center of circulation. Nonetheless, this is still an impressive circulation and could be near hurricane strength by the time it makes landfall in Texas by early tomorrow. I'm going to take here out a quicker visible satellite imagery here. If this wants to load, it's a little bit kind of finicky with loading. If not, we'll just back it up there we go so you notice the visible satellite from about uh, 205 was fairly indicative that we have a fairly good banding effect here on the west or i'm sorry on the eastern side but it's not really curving back around into the center which infers that there still might be some northernly shear uh, that's being impacted uh, blowing from the north to the south and that might still be impinging on some of this convection rotating upstream Nonetheless, this still does look pretty impressive uh, for what it is right now. And if we just take a look at that, now you can see some of that convective burst uh, starting to occur there. So something that's been happening today in the model fields, especially and more notably the GFS forecast here. The GFS, this is valid as of uh, roughly about 7 or 8 p.m. tonight, about 8 p.m. this evening. And this shows about a thousand millibars. So currently right about where we're positioned, we're about 999, this is showing a thousand. So not too bad for the spatial resolution of the GFS. But you notice here's that dry air. That's the dry continental air from Mexico in Texas that's being uh, entrained a little bit. And you kind of notice that dry slot right here, how that's a little bit of a dry slot that from time to time, and especially over here is trying to rotate in from time to time. Now, nonetheless, what's interesting, and if we kind of move that out here to the hour 18 time frame, pressure is down to 999, where we're currently at right now, but you notice drier air that's kind of being plagued into it. And if we take an average area sounding here of the system, we'll take an average area sounding roughly uh, 82 over 76, so 82 temperature, which is this red line, and 76 Fahrenheit dew point, which is this green line. The wet bulb temperature and this kind of blue line that I'm tracing out right now, that's fairly inferred and fairly indicative of high uh, precipital water content, which uh, if you look over here, the precipital water is 2.54 inches. What that basically means is how much rain can you squeeze out of one single cell? That would be 2.54 inches. So that is fairly indicative. Uh, we have a fairly significant um, moist atmosphere here. Notice the uh, instability as well. Fairly decent, but the mid-level cape could do some work at about 353. Curved hodographs, though, which does suggest that we could see favorable cyclonic vorticity uh, in these thunderstorms that would induce hot tower-like development and cause for strengthening of the cyclone. And in fact, that's what the GFS forecast shows by landfall point uh, by about 2 p.m. tomorrow on the GFS, this cyclone now is down to 993 millibars, encompassed within its own cyclonic vorticity. If we take this out just before landfall and do another averaged area sounding here, you can notice that we have 80 over 76. So this is kind of moistened a little bit in the atmosphere, uh, a little bit drier in the mid-levels, probably roughly at about 300 millibars or so. So way up there, that's probably... 
a good five or so kilometers up above with our mixing ratio that's pretty good in the atmosphere. Uh, favorable photographs, but our surface-based instability is lacking a little bit further. Uh, but you notice our precipital water contents now up to 2.63 and our relative humidity from about 850 millibars through the first three from the first 300 millibars all the way to 850 uh, which is down at 5,000 feet is about 87. So we have a fairly significant uh, moist air mass and that's allowing for these thunderstorms to develop pretty quickly. In the, in the uh, h wharf model, rather as much of the same, deepening this into a hurricane. We're not going to really show, out of respect, we don't want to, you know, cause any fear. Excuse me, we don't want to cause any fear or anything. So we're only going to show the h wharf model to our about 18 here. This is about uh, 2 a.m. this morning, or 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. N eight, or sorry, 981 millibars here. So getting fairly deep, uh, decent moisture content in the atmosphere so this is fairly interesting and the h wharf model which actually if you look at it now for what it's at it, it was at 993 so it is a little bit too hot or a little bit too low uh by this time today so the h wharf might be on a little bit of a high bias Regardless, impacts remain the same for those areas. And if you look here at the storm surge values from Galveston Bay uh, through Corpus Christi and, Ma and Matagorda Bay, one to three feet of storm surge, that's the mouth of the Rio Grande right there. Uh, this is the, tex uh, the Texas and Mexico line here, so the U.S. and Mexico state or borders here. And that's High Island, uh, Texas right there. So about one to three feet of storm surge is expected for almost all of the Texas coastline here. Uh, due to the way that this is shaped in the um, train here is shaped as the storm comes inland it is going to pump some of that storm surge so you can expect about one to three feet of storm surge uh, from about uh, Corpus Christi to Matagorda Bay and Galveston Bay all the way up to near High Island, in High Island Texas in the mouth of the Rio Grande Valley there and if you take a look here at the rainfall amounts this is one of the things that we've been talking about. Don't focus so much on the intensity, but rather the rainfall. And if you look here, the southern portion of Texas, uh, roughly about four to six inches of rainfall with some isolated amounts of 10 inches possible, especially just offshore. That continues all the way inland into portions of Mexico even. So this is going to be a fairly significant rainfall event and even all the way through portions of Louisiana, uh, even as far west, uh, uh, or sorry, yeah, as far east rather as portions of mobile bay could see about two to three inches of rainfall from a system that's way over here this is a fairly large system a fairly large envelope of energy and thus has a fairly large envelope here uh, to work with in terms of potential impacts but again the main impacts uh, of this is going to be this heavy rainfall storm surge gusty winds certainly uh, right near the landfall point again this could be close to hurricane intensity so for folks right now now, uh, from the Rio Grande Valley, just south and uh, west of Houston, in the mouth of the Rio Grande, Galveston Bay, McAllen, Texas, those areas now need to start paying even closer attention to the progress of Tropical Storm Hannah uh, over the next 24 hours or so. And if you do voluntary evacuate, there could be some evacuations in low-lying areas. So if you do choose to evacuate, uh, make sure to do so safely as, again, you know, ev with everything going on in the world right now, uh, we want you to do so safely. So make sure that if you are going to evacuate, know where you're going and get out as soon as possible because once uh, conditions deteriorate, if you live on the barrier islands there, uh, in the outermost islands, some of the uh, some of the bridges to other islands are going to start closing down and be impassable after a wind, spe after wind speed uh, picks up um, to a certain extent because obviously the higher you go on a bridge the more you're getting with that so obviously we want everyone to be safe there now one thing that we are going to start talking a little bit less about is tropical storm gonzalo because the, the main problem here maximum sustained winds have now dropped to 45 miles per hour thanks to recon that was in there pressure of 1008 millibars this is still a closed uh, system but here's the caveat again this is now a fairly weak disorganized system weaker than we first even thought 
And as such, again, the main impacts of, of this, again, Barbados has canceled that hurricane watch. Uh, all the hurricane watches have been rightfully canceled. This is not going to be even close to about 70 miles per hour or so by the time this even gets to the island chain. Now, impacts uh, still remain relatively the same for some areas. Again, heavy rain, uh, some gusty winds, obviously, in those squalls that do come through. Uh, if you get any under any of the convective bursts that are uh, developing periodically, that could cause, obviously, that those downbursts to bring localized, you know, 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So understand that this is still going to provide an impact. This still will be an impact storm uh, because obviously the wind is not just the, the storm is not just one wind is not just one impact, i.e. being the wind. The storm is rainfall, you know, if it's strong enough storm surge, stuff like that. So the biggest takeaway here is that this is not going to be so much of a wind problem as much as it is going to be some heavy rain. We're not super concerned though about flooding. We're getting uh, the storm now moving at about 18 miles per hour, getting caught up in some of these stronger trade winds now. So this is starting to really uh, ramp out of here and this is going to pass into the Caribbean where it stands virtually almost 0% chance of actually surviving in the Caribbean and should become an open wave here by about hour 60, if not sooner. So for the islands, Trinidad, Trinidad Tobago, Grenada, even Barbados, St. Lucia, those islands, the main uh, impact right now is going to be some heavy rainfall, maybe two to four inches of rain probably less than that even in some spots especially the further north you go the further away you go from the center the less chance you have for a significant rainfall event tropical storm winds only extending about 25 miles it's a fairly small system so the odds of any one area getting impacted directly by tropical storm uh, force winds is going to be relatively small as such this is a relatively low wind impact but again the heavy rainfall can kill people and we want to stress that enough that this is going to produce some heavy rainfall consequently could cause some uh, flooding and low-lying and poor drainage areas down there so it is very important to take this seriously but good news for the islands is that this is now starting to undergo significant weakening and should not be a significant wind threat of course you never can say never in the tropics with a very small system with water temperatures running about 29 to 30 Celsius. But overall, the overall degradation of the pattern today has been, the overall pattern and trend today has been a weaker system moving into the islands, thus reducing the chance for this becoming a hurricane or anything significant in the wind term. But again, that rainfall is going to be a problem. If you take a look at what's going on uh, with the actual satellite presentation, this is from Weather Nerds. Again, fairly disorganized. You had a, a fairly good convective burst. And if we take a look at the IR satellite presentation from tropicaltippets.com for a couple of, about 20 minutes ago, a fairly significant degradation in the overall pattern. This is likely to be undergoing a significant weakening trend. The center is now starting to become a little bit more exposed and the recon plane that was in there only found maximum sustained winds closer to about you know 40 to 45 miles per hour on the far northwestern quadrant of the storm. So this is likely now now undergoing a significant weakening trend it could even open up into a wave pattern by the time it actually approaches the islands within the next about 24 hours or so so this is going to be something we watch but again not really concerned about it for the most part at all now one thing that is going to be interesting though over the next few days or so is we do have another wave coming off of africa this will be designated invest 91l probably within the next few days or so, but this now has a 40% chance of development over the next five days, uh, up about 10% from the previous 8 o'clock uh, tropical weather outlook, from 30 now to 40%, uh, better overall the better overall trends today do suggest that this could go on to be our next named storm. The next name would be Isaias. Uh, that's, I believe, how you pronounce this. The, the next name storm would be Isaias out here, and this is likely to be something... If not something, it will probably at least go on to try to develop. But overall, this does look like that this will try to go on to develop into probably um, 
uh, our first main development region hurricane. It's a little bit hard to say right now. Uh, the GFS forecast, though, over the next uh, couple of days here, again, this is Hannah over here, and this is uh, Gonzalo over here. And you can see Gonzalo moves into the islands, weakens fairly significantly. The GFS forecast finally now starting to see Hannah after it was fairly uh, anemic with anything, but now started to finally see it. So the model playing catch up once again here, no real surprise. The GFS has played terrible with uh, forecasting these storms as of late. And then as we start to turn our attention now over the next few days back towards the deep tropics once again you notice 120 hours there is something there's another wave out here there's a wave a fairly big blocking ridge of high pressure out here sending these waves into the islands uh, not something to be worried about right now, but you notice that this is going to be something we'll be watching over the next few days or so. Obviously, uh, you know, once we get the ensembles here for 12 for the 12Z models, you know, we'll share that on our Twitter. But again, for the most part right now, we have one wave right here. One wave right here will be fairly interesting to watch that over the next few days to see how that does occur as a very lar uh, loud uh, car horn goes off. Yeah, but hour 168 though, this is now a tropical uh, cyclone in the uh, Caribbean here. So we will be watching that over the next few days or so as that generally now starts to progress uh, further into the Caribbean. So a lot to watch over the next few days or so. But again, I will be providing constant updates as always. So go follow me on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for everyone who has. We have surpassed 630 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you all all for for your continued support we are trying to do very good stuff here for the channel hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening as that car horn is still going off <laughs> and i'll see you guys back here then tomorrow morning stay tuned